the Lake Michigan Angler Podcast. What's on, guys? Right here. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to Lake Michigan Angler Podcast, Season 2, Episode 1. Michael here and, of course, Rob. Um, and we're glad to be back. This has been quite a year. And so, of course, just like last season when we started the podcast, this first episode, it's just us. And it's more so of a broad overview, a recap of the 2022 fishing season up to this point. I mean, right now we're in the winter period. So, um, you know, we still got like browns and, and the steelhead are coming in for a lot of that fishing. You got perch are going to be coming in as well. So guys are getting ready for the perch. So still a lot of good fishing going on. But but as far as the silverfish goes, the coho and the, and the kings, um, you know, for summertime, our spring period, um, that's all done with. And so kind of recapping what we saw both individually as, as you know, as, on our trips out and then of course here at the shop because we got all the charter guys and all the weekend guys and the in the and the casual fun fishermen that come in and share, you know their trips and their experience with us. We have a really kind of good uh, picture of of how everything kind of played out. So um, let's start at the top of the year um, in, in in how the year started, and I really feel like it's worth comparing how uh, the fishing was compared to last year in twenty twenty one, which I thought was excellent i mean across the board it was when we talked about it last year the fishing was pretty even across all species every species kind of just performed for everyone there were we saw good coho numbers we saw really good kings size and numbers in the fall throughout the summertime they were around uh, of course your lakers your browns everyone every all the fish showed up pretty equally and when we look at this year it was a very different landscape so for for, for you you know Let's start the conversation. What did you see uh, in, in the broader picture before we break it down season by season? Well, um, the water stayed cold for a long time. And so things didn't set up quite like normal. It took a little longer. But we had really good fishing, and a lot of the fish stuck around longer because of that. Um, and so like just as a, a general overview of the season, we always had really good fishing the whole year. I mean, there was only, you might get like half a week where it was tough. And then the rest of the time was really good, you know, um, averaging 15 to 20 fish a trip. And he, there were kings, there were cohos, there were steelhead. Steelhead kind of took a little longer to come around, but um, it was just always something to catch. It was really good. Size was good. I mean, it was hard to go wrong out there, mm -hmm. really. Yeah, I, I think for sure what you said already about the weather, that weather this year really did have an impact in our fishing right we saw again another great year for coho in the spring mm -hmm. and i remember pretty early on i mean last year i started fishing in february down in indiana right mm -hmm. usually like to go to starting early year you know um i didn't I last year started february this year started in march i was like a little month behind but by that time you know you saw your good cookie cutter spring you know coho's your 18 to 20 some inch you know your three to five pound range um but what was interesting was by right around may when when they start migrating up our area and we were going out to catch them there was a period where you're catching the cookie cutter guys and then i re remember distinctly on one trip went out limited on a coho but they were all tanks like solid fives and a little bit bigger you know which for that early in the year i was like Oh, okay. Um, maybe I just ran into a really good school. It was a fantastic, mm -hmm. you know, day out. Went out the next day, and it was the same thing. Then the next day, and I'm like, wait a minute. And I remember telling you, like, oh, Rob, these coho for this early in the spring, like these are above average for mm -hmm. the time period. I'm like, I'm like, something's going on here. This is actually pretty incredible early spring, you know, coho fishing. And sure enough, we saw it with 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 our customers coming in. Everyone like, man, these coho is amazing. It's this early, and we're catching some stud, uh, you know, five, six, seven pounds pretty often, which, mm -hmm. you know, you don't see. You see two, three, four pounds normally. Um, and I think in future episodes, we're going to definitely dive into, like, everything season by season. But in, in general, um, to see the size of those fish that early into the year, in, in, in you know, March, April, May, like it makes you wonder what happened that allowed these fish to kind of come in and, and you know what that may have been now of course we can only speculate so for you what do you think could have been factors that led to us seeing just 
that kind of a size for that early in the year? Well, basically, it goes back to when they were stocked or close to when they were stocked, to me, at least. They were able to find baby alewives small enough for them to eat at a young age. And when they can get on alewives earlier in life, they're going to grow a lot faster than if they're stuck eating bugs because all the alewives are too big for them to eat. They just grow much faster eating fish than they do bugs. Mm -hmm. So I I was thinking about this too. Um, You know, those fish that we saw in the early spring are are, what, like two-year-old fish? What would you say? Yeah. So about two years. Do you think two years ago, in the last few years, we've had some pretty mild winters. Do you think that factors into these fish being able to source food throughout that winter period is not as cold or not as brutal on the water. Does that That's the at theory all? that a lot of people say, you know, if you have a milder winter, it's easier on the alewife population. It's easier on all the fish, really. Um, it, it makes sense to me. No matter what, the water's cold, though, and they're cold water species. Yeah, so they're, yeah. like, at least the salmon and the trout are cold water species. They're, they are built to survive in cold water. Right. So, but, but the real impact cold is, on, is cold, right? No but the real what, impact but, is on the on the bait, though. How that yeah. cold kind of because we all know if, if temperatures shift enough, or if it's turbulent, or um, you, you know, like in the harbors, it'll freeze over generally. Even if we don't have like a brutal winter, it's still cold mm-hmm. enough it'll freeze freeze over. But I'm sure that weather conditions can still impact what's going oh, on. Oh, for sure, there, right? And I think the less ice on the lake, the better for those fish to survive, the alewives at least. And Yeah. You know, so. There was a, there was a couple of years where we had, um, oh, no, a few years ago, remember we had like a polar vortex? Yeah. And it was pol- like negative. I think it was like the first time ever that the lake completely froze over. Right. Yeah. So stuff like that could be something that might affect those bait fish, mm-hmm. which then maybe stunts or slows down these fish growth. So. Yeah, you know, they can, uh, a good winter period, there's no fishing pressure. So it's, for them, it's like a free roam, free game mm-hmm. to do whatever they want, under, under, uninterrupted in, in like their real natural habitat. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, I, I think I agree for sure that, that that could have been a factor in why we saw that size of a coho. And then, of course, we start moving into like June. And, you know, as you said, the weather was, still cold mm-hmm. i mean we're in middle of june and the water temps were still in the like low to mid 50s yep which for us in the kayak was great because we didn't we still we were still fishing pretty close we have to go off off into the distance just yet um but i think and i remember telling you too i said man you know this colder water it's definitely kind of delaying stuff. Like it's good because it kind of extended the coho fishing, which everyone loves coho. But it made eating. the king fishing a little tougher yes. earlier on because they could be anywhere. So you'd hear sporadic reports of kings, yeah. but no consistency because they could be anywhere in the lake. The water is cold everywhere. Yeah, yeah. It it made it tough, and then right, in, I would say about middle, early to mid July is when it started getting more to like our summer program the water warmed up a bit yeah during the salmon or ammo there was some really good king fishing there, there was the kings showed up and showed out especially north like algoma sheboygan uh up in um green bay uh what's it called um up in door county there yeah, yeah but what's sturgeon the, bay sturgeon and, bay yep. yeah there because i remember salmon or ammo like mm-hmm. the first five or six boats that were Placed up and it was just really i mean we had really good fishing here but then up there was just phenomenal well, it was like lights out yeah because when we saw the, the bigger kings were up there, mm-hmm. we were talking about it here. We didn't have, um, we didn't have the numbers. We didn't of have big the kings. numbers, kings, and we didn't have compared to the prior year. I don't even think we had enough numbers uh, of kings caught per boat. Like last year, it was pretty consistent. Guys would get three, four, five, six kings on the trips out. This year was guys were really kind of struggling to find until it. until salmon or ammo. I mean, we were getting ten a trip for a while there. Um, through Relax, August, a lot of a lack size. But yeah, we didn't have a lot of fish over twenty pounds. Right. I mean, there were some random big fish caught out of here. Right. You know, twenty five to thirty. There was a thirty two, I think, thirty one. Um, but it was not on any kind of consistent basis. Right. Whereas last year. You know, we were seeing 25s caught every day. Right, right. Those fish just weren't here. We had the the 15, the 20s. We had, we had tons of those. All the teens fish. Yeah. yeah, we definitely had all the teens, the the 12 to 18, the occasional 20, and then mm-hmm. once in a blue moon, maybe once or twice a week, we'd get someone that caught like a 20, 20 plus, and then certainly less 
25 plus. Mm-hmm. And I thought that was interesting because I remember distinctly me and you having this conversation um, right around Sam and Aramo, and I'm like, man, we're we're not seeing a lot of these bigger kings here. The guys are catching, you know, the teens and all that stuff. Like, which to me are some of the better eating sizes, you know, the 12, mm-hmm. the 15, 18 pounds, nice, you know. Uh, but Sam and Aramo, we saw all the guys banging them out up further north, like Sheboygan North, let's say, on our side of the lake. Um, and 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 then I remember saying, man, Rob, I, I'm I'm a little going into Late summer, it grew and intensified. And then finally around August, I remember saying, dude, I think this fall run is not going to be as good as last year. And, uh, and a lot of times with me, Rob and I's conversations, when I share some of my concerns, Rob's like, uh, you know, well, you kind of like what's your normal response to stuff when I say like when I'm a little, I don't want to say doom and gloom because it's not that. It's just more of like a. Based off what I'm seeing, I'm a little skeptical that it's going to be like this. And you, normally you'll say something to the effect of what? Like, Well, you just got to wait and see because yeah. I, over the years I've just seen doom and gloom stuff where you were like, oh, man, coal has disappeared or there's no kings. And you start thinking like the fall is going to suck or whatever. And then like a week later, it's all back to normal and fine. Right. And I've just, you know, I've seen it year after year. Everybody gets kind of worried about something because there's tough fishing for a week or some fish are small or whatever, and then it's all back to normal. And so I don't worry about it too much. No, uh, yeah, he's very nice. You're very nonchalant when, when, especially when I raise him. I'm like, nah, it's fine. It'll be that. That exactly. <laughs> that's exactly how you play with me. And I'm like, I don't know, dude. And and um, so boom, we get into well before we get to the fall. Um, July was kind of like set up back into our, like our, what we see for our normal summertime fishing. Yep, we saw, a lot we of saw kings. kings set up on the structure out of here. It was really good fishing. Um, I mean, we were getting 10 to 15 just before work in the morning on a, yeah. on a regular basis. Yeah. You know. Yeah. No, it was definitely good numbers, not size necessarily. Yeah. But we also started to see regular catches of seven, eight, nine pound coho. Mm-hmm. So I'll, it was really interesting because we had a lot of shop talk and maybe, maybe we need to do more of those shop talks live because, you know, that's just very much what you would do. At, let's call it like shop talk slash doc talk. So if you're at the dock with the guys, it's kind of like the same conversations you would have about mm-hmm. what you're seeing out there, comparing notes, if you would, on, on the fishing and what you think is happening and all that stuff. Rob and I having these conversations like, Kings are kind of not here, but damn, these coho are actually a little, they're study. Like, this is not typical size we normally see for June and July, or, or yeah, kind of like June, but definitely July into August. Mm-hmm. We're starting to see, like, high single, you know, high single-digit number coho, or weight-wise, being caught. And even 20-pounders. There was a one. <laughs> no, wait, wait. <laughs> You're, you got a 20-pounder, right? Oh, yeah. All right. Yeah. You want to go ahead and just call me out on it? So I caught one. <laughs> I thought it could have been, but it ended up being like 14. So I was off a little bit. <laughs> I was off. But, you know, in the, in the excitement of it all, I knew it was big. It was I knew, a big I fit. knew it was a it double was a really digit. Good coho. It, was a, it was a double digit coho. Um, so I, I just kind of freaked out a little bit. I'm like, dude, this guy might be pushing 20. So Rob on the phone, I'm on the water. I literally caught the fish. I'm, 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 off, the, I'm off the hills in my kayak sitting there floating around after i land this fish and i call rob like dude i think i got one da, da, da. rob's like yeah no nah, it's probably like 12 pounds i said <laughs> i felt so offended i was like how dare you tell me it's 12 pounds i'm not even looking at the fish He's like, yeah no nah, i need to see it i'm like oh oh don't ever call him for like uh emotional support <laughs> he'll just poop on it real quick <laughs> so um you know, we 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 saw this bigger size. Um, it was such an interesting period, going into like July and August. Bigger bigger coho, regular numbers of them. Um, kings were around, not quite as big, and then, kind of like an unexpected uh, guest appears in all of this, which is the pink salmon. Yeah, and they just became. For a few weeks. They were everybody's like, favorite fish for like three weeks. <laughs> there, was, there was a three-week period. I mean, we were like, we, we, it was definitely like an inside joke. But also like, yo, everyone right now was hunting. Once Jerry popped that 
new state record for Illinois mm-hmm. that didn't last long at all. <laughs> I'm sorry, Jerry. <laughs> but he said it wasn't. He knew right away yeah, it wasn't yeah. going to last. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and we're definitely going to have him in to talk about. We're going to have a, a episode dedicated to the pink salmon. So mm-hmm. We can dive that because it's so interesting. So many people never knew, couldn't distinguish between coho and the pinks. Um, and wow, did they show up? Yep. And again, without going too deep into it, because we're gonna do a episode dedicated to the pinks. But uh, why, why, why did they just show up? It's, it's a question in my mind that uh, that I think we're gonna be talking about for a long time, and especially going into next year, do they return? Do we see the same thing? Was this a fluke year? For the pinks, so yeah, like on the west coast, they're a two year fish, so every other year you get a run of them. Mm. It's not like consistent every year, at least in certain rivers. I'm not an expert on that, but um, that's what I understand. You know, we've been seeing more and more numbers of them every year here. Um, and they've been around for a very long time, but all of a sudden, it just out of nowhere just exploded. Yeah, you know, who else isn't an expert on on pinks? DNR. <laughs> yeah. We'll save that story for when Jerry's here because that one was a doozy. But, yep. Um, <laughs> so, um, Pink Salmon, pretty incredible to see those guys, you know, in, in the fray with everything. And it's even cooler seeing them now, or like it's about a month ago now, um, seeing them in the rivers, just like on the West Coast with the big humps. Oh, yeah. We did see, guys sent us pictures yep. of that, which is really, really cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, which, by the way, guys, if, if, if any time you catch something, Snap, snap a photo, especially if it's like with gear that you've got out of the shop. Send us the pictures. Shoot it to us on the Instagram DM. You could message uh, us uh, on the Facebook page for the shop, like Michigan Angler on Facebook. Um, send it. We we definitely want to start showcasing more of what you guys uh, are catching and, and and all that stuff. So um, just a quick little mention on that stuff. Uh, so the pink showed up. That was crazy to kind of experience that because, like you said, there was a three-week period where it was like Pink Salmon Palooza where everyone was going out and everyone was like, hey, guys, is this a pink or a coho? I mean, all the Facebook groups were littered with fish ID, fish mm-hmm. IDs. Is this a pink? Or the guy saying in the comments, that's not a pink. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, all that kind of thing going on. We saw the record in Illinois caught by Jerry. And then shortly after, not even a week, was it? They confu- was it Confusion Charters? Yep. Uh, upped it and caught a bigger pink. Yeah, that, real nice fish. Yeah, that, that then is now the current standing mm-hmm. Illinois pink record. Um, so that was really cool. We move into August period. We didn't see the steelhead show up. The steelhead did not. It took a while. It was the end of August. We started seeing some steelhead. But it was nothing. I mean, but at but, that point, we were like, just looking for kings and you know yeah, and yeah kings. we were looking for staging kings but for sure the steelhead fishing i don't think was anything close to what last year august was remember last year august it was, was lights out I it mean, was it was a little shorter lived this i mean when they came in it was pretty lights out but it didn't last this long but that's kind of what i'm saying yeah, last like year last just, august it was like three it was like, weeks yeah, it was almost weeks. a whole month of mm-hmm. august you would run out to 250 and just bang out steelhead I mean, guys were loving it. They were mm-hmm. they were holding they were holding there consistently for that period. Big fish, twelves, fifteens, mm-hmm. a lot of twelve and fifteens. This year it was like you said, it came, but it was really quick. Yep. And then it was like still are not around as much anymore. Yeah. So well, that was the other difference. Like we got pounded with warm water at the end towards the end yeah, of the I mean yeah. it was yeah, you had to get out really really far to get into some fish. We we did get uh, stiffed right at the end. Funny enough, because the East East Side guys in Michigan, they had the the pee pee warm water for a while, mm-hmm. and uh, when was it? Maybe middle of August. There was a certain period in that time where it, the lake just and they got all the cold water. Yep, and then it just hit us. You know, right when you know, of course, I'm like, all right, this it's set up perfectly right now. We just need another week or two because they're gonna start coming in. And that happened, and then it became like, oh, God, this is going to be a grind, mm-hmm. you know, for those stagers, um, which, again, wasn't as hot for for me personally, wasn't as hot as it was last year. I mean, last year, I've caught my first staging kings the first 
few days into August. It was like the first week for sure, following, mm-hmm. you know, right out in front. Boom, boom, boom. This year, oh, it was a bit of a grind. Yeah. I re- and I, I honestly, I, I told you this. I, in August, I burnt myself out because I was constantly out almost every day trying to find them. Are they here? Are they here? Are they here? And I'm searching. You know, you're doing a, ser- you're doing a lot of recon, you know, mm-hmm. to find out where the early ones are coming. We had tougher water conditions. Uh, but those guys on the east side, uh, it hurt, didn't it? it? I mean, we would oh, see the pictures. Once, yeah, it hurt the, the, to see all the pictures there. of you guys on the eastern side. You, you, you know, congrats to you. But I can tell you over here, we were very envious of those <laughs> five-man king limits. And, like, the smallest king was 18 pounds. Mm-hmm. It was ridiculous. So they definitely, uh, you know, that luck. You know, it, it seems like every year it kind of flips a little yeah. bit, you know. And who's going to get the the timing right for that yep. fall run with the water. Is it our side or is it going to be their side? It's mm-hmm. either or, you know. So they they had it. And, uh, of course, quite a few of our guys from over here went over there. Yep. Um, like um, Blake, and he went over there with a couple of guys. Yep. I know uh, Keating went out there. Mm-hmm. And the pictures they sent to us were just it, – it, I just wanted to go at that point just fish bluegill inland because I was like, this is <laughs> – this is kind of hurting my soul to see what they're doing out there. So they they definitely had a a, a good run. We had a little bit tougher, um, and it was at that point where I again came back and said, "Dude, I just don't think this run is going to be as great as it was as last year." And for me, it didn't. I I know last year I caught fifty, roughly fifty kings in in the two month period, August September. This year, thirty. So I was already down twenty. Mm-hmm. My biggest fish was only twenty four. And the average king weight, because like I averaged it out in the high teens, if that. Yeah. It might be like 15-pound average yep. for kings, which it's kind of like what we saw even over the summer period. A lot, lot of teens in that 12, mm-hmm. 15, 18-pound. So another question, like where did the bigger guys go? Why, why did they not come our way this year? Um, you know, what may have kept them further north in Stur- Sturgeon Bay? Uh, obviously we know why they were on the east side they had that cold water my personal theory is the lake kind of flipped the the temps on us and i think those guys were already kind of over there and they just stood there because the water just set up for them and they didn't have to come travel around so we just kind of had like the guys that were on our side and and we just kind of didn't get the yeah the big wave of the bigger fish yeah and historically that northern half of the lake typically holds bigger fish than down here but we still usually have some. And I think some of the ones that ran, from what I saw, like the bigger fish, came in quite a bit later. Uh, just talking to people and seeing what some of the guys were catching in October in the rivers. Yeah. Like the fish, like at that point, we were done fishing for kings, right? Yeah. But then there was some monsters coming in to the rut into the Sheboygan later in the season when we were all done fishing. Yeah. Yeah, I, I would I would say I would say this year, when you look at our area ports, and when I say our, our area ports, I would consider you know Waukegan up to Milwaukee would be kind of our our range in the, our northern Illinois, southern Wisconsin area. I I think it's safe to say that Milwaukee had the best showing of kings. They really had a lot of good fish. The jig bite was up there was really good. We saw a lot of of the bigger fish caught up. Consi- mm-hmm. more consistently up in milwaukee so yep for whatever reason this year milwaukee i think was the standout um harbor for the fall king run mm-hmm. so if if you were going out for kings that was definitely probably an area you want to focus yeah, on milwaukee for, sure. for you know because it was a lot different down here in racine and in, in kenosha waukegan performed Really well, Keegan well. was actually yeah. really good this year. For numbers, um, for, for sure. For numbers of fish, for yeah. numbers, It was pretty consistent. Mm-hmm. So if you're a kayak guy, you're a shore guy, great fishing opportunity right there in Ottawa, Keegan. Um, so, that, that you know, to me, while Keegan, that's a couple of years now that it's been pretty consistent. Yep. And um, sometimes I kind of scratch my head, like, I wonder why it is, because I don't know. Do you know offhand the stocking efforts they're doing there? I, I don't even I don't know remember. what I'd have do. to look it up. But something's going on that they're coming back there. Yeah. Maybe they're getting lost, or I don't know what they are. I know they stock, like, trout. Yeah, they stock all the different species. Do they still still stock kings out of there, though? Yeah. Oh, they do? They do stock Milwaukee. I just don't remember the numbers. So they do brown, steelhead, 
Um, I assume co-hosts, uh, and definitely Kings. Got you. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, while Keegan is by far, for those of you that don't want to cross the border, that is your, your, your Holy grail port that you want to be fishing out of. Mm -hmm. And it was pretty consistent throughout the year. The spring for the co-hosts consistent, um, you know, and then in your fall period, and I'm pretty sure it's going to do well going into winter with, yep. you know, your Browns and your steelhead. Guys had already started catching them. Oh, yeah, they're catching them now. Yeah. They were, and then with this cold weather, like right now, the cold weather is just hitting us good. I think it look, it's going to be cold all next week. I might have seen snow in the forecast. That's going to be really good for those Browns and steelhead. If it's snowing, you better be fishing for Browns and steelhead. Yeah, that's something you always you always say. Is that is there a theory behind that? My theory is that, like, I just catch fish every time it's snowing. Just something you notice over, over, <laughs> over time and experience, right? No, the barometric but, pressure, something changes, and the, especially the brown trout get fired up when it's snowing. Open water and snow are really good combination for those fish. Yeah. That's just something you notice over, just over time. Every time you fish in the snow, it would just be... Yeah. Just, that's one of those things you notice. Yeah. Time in the water, you start to notice those little things. Especially know. a good snow. If it's just, like, a random snowflake here and there, it's nothing, but... But you got a good flurry going, you, you should be catching fish. If you're not, you're in the wrong spot. So basically, if you're eating snowflakes, you're yeah. going to be catching fish. Yeah. <laughs> Just had incredible days in the snow. Yeah. I remember we, we, we had a good time a couple years ago, but it was, it was in the spring. It was like ice out. Mm-hmm. And we were just casting. It was just constantly. It was, it was pretty crazy. Yeah. You were throwing random stuff, too. You were, you were throwing swim baits. and. Oh, yeah. I mean, because it didn't matter. Yeah, no. You could put anything in the water, and they're going to eat it when it was like that. Yeah. But yeah, swim baits, uh, like the the segmented rubber trout, like the line through trout. I think those the savage gear ones. Mm -hmm. Caught a bunch of fish on that. Even just on figure eights, right next to the kayak. Um, ways to catch fish that are you know you don't normally catch too many brown trout on figure eights like you would pike, and. That was, that was quite an experience. Fun times. You got to take advantage of big of fish too. I think the one I had that day was seventeen pounds. Uh, oh, wow. Good ones, yeah. Yeah, I, I, that's my goal going into the winter now is to break that twenty mark with a brown. Biggest so far is like fourteen, mm -hmm. which is respectable for sure. But to to pop a a twenty, it's one of them big belly ones that we've seen. Mm -hmm. That's gonna be super cool. Um, so now. We have our run. Here we are now. This is we're, we're sitting here now having this conversation in November. <clears throat> we're waiting for these fish to kind of really set up. Like we said, we got cold weather coming in. Um, I was out last week to kind of check what's going on with the Browns, and uh, I, I still saw kings in the harbor. Yeah, there's still kings, and there's still a ton of cohos, which is kind of interesting because a lot of years – the cohos, like even if we have like a really good year for cohos, come yeah. the end of the season, they disappear because most of them are stocked on the other side of the lake. And we don't see the runs of them here. Um, this year, we had good cohos fishing all summer, late summer, fall came, they were still here, and now they're running the rivers. We have them over here. And, it, it, and we always have some, but never this many in the rivers. It's pretty unique. And I haven't seen this many fish coho-wise in the, in the rivers in almost 10 years. I almost forgot that, yeah, I was out fall fishing for the coho, and it was freaking amazing. Mm -hmm. And they're still there. They're Right now, those rivers are still loaded with cohos. I never experienced the fall run for coho like I did this year. And they were jumping everywhere. And, and literally, what's crazy, so I got live scope, as you know, on my, on my kayak this year, which is, that, that needs to be its own kind of conversation. Um, mm -hmm on that which I'll say that for another day but as i'm panning around looking literally as i'm trolling in the river there was a section where there had been about a hundred of them just condensed down into just a 10 by 10 area and I, it was incredible trolling over them pop boom it was I, i've never seen that and again it's like we started the year with the uh, with our normal size spring coho cookie cutter size, a few weeks in we start seeing the bigger guys consistently five mm -hmm. six pounds seven pounds I'm like okay it's pretty good. Summertime we're starting to see nines tens, elevens caught, and then come the fall and these guys are still tanking yeah. eights nines twelves. We saw quite a few people catch uh, 
uh, 14s and, mm-hmm. and, and all that. We even saw, I think the biggest I saw was like 17 or 18. Yeah, it was caught. just monster fish. Incredible yeah. fall run for the coho. Yeah. I, you know, I, if there was any one species that took the crown for this year, the coho stole the show. Yep. Without question, there's no arguing that point. The coho showed up and just put on a, a clinic on, mm-hmm. on on every other fish for us. It was pretty incredible. So, yeah, you're right. That, that I don't even know how. I've, I almost feel like I had a better time coho, fall fish for coho, than I did the kings. Yeah, yeah. There, are, there are a lot of fun to catch. Like the kings are a blast because they have the long run. It's a long fight. Yeah. They're going to drag you around in your <clears> kayak. <throat> The coals are a different fight. You know, it's uh, a lot more head shakes to wrap themselves up. The yeah. it's, it's more aerobatic. It's they're a good time, and they're surprisingly difficult to catch. And they can be surprisingly difficult to catch in the fall. And like we often think about coals as being these really easy fish to catch. In the spring, you go out and you catch your limit in an hour, and get you know three man limit in an hour, and you're done. And they're hard not to catch. And you know, you try to figure out ways not to catch them because they're just eating machines. But then all of a sudden, come October, and they are the moodiest fish. Yeah. You know, like you really have to pay attention to the fine details to get them dialed in. 100%. It will say with the Kings. The Kings this year were so moody. Mm-hmm. Found them around, and you would do everything, and uh, you just had to be, you had to figure out what that one thing mm-hmm. is, and then they would go. Same thing with the same thing with the coho because I was trolling all kinds of stuff, and there, there was this uh, there was this one lure that you gave me. That you're like, no, they just, you gave it to me like last year. Like this is the one to use, and so I, I was out there. I'm like, no, they're not hitting all the other cranks I would troll that would produce. I'm like, all right, you know what? Let me try this one that Rob has said to put out. So I just put that on my third rod straight back, and it was getting demolished. You know, so for whatever reason, mm-hmm. the action of that one um did the trick and those are those kinds of things that we have to cycle through to figure out what to yep. get them to go because in that fall period i mean those fish didn't get that big for no reason mm-hmm. they're probably the, the smarter ones out of the out of the lot that made it that far into life yeah to get eight nine twelve fourteen pounds mm-hmm. um it doesn't help that their mind is already focused on the, the reproduction process so they're mm-hmm. not really thinking of everything else so you really do got to get them going yeah somehow and but yeah get that reaction out of them yeah that fall yeah fall fall co was was really good too um we're going in look for browns and steelhead now coming in the winter point perch let's not forget about perch i think perch did really good this year i i in fact remember fishing for them after the season opened up was it like middle of june it opens back mm-hmm. up right it was, it was like it was right after the 15th of june i started hitting some spots and i found them and uh it was pretty good i mean guys were catching them pretty consistently from the bottom of the lake all the way up through racine yep if you put in your work you hit you could catch some some good perch you had some good catches there were some good catches yeah i had a good time there were two trips i went out specifically for them and uh, i was able to get you know a couple into the into the fish bag um nothing like our 12 inch jumbos <clears throat> but certainly caught eater size, you know, mm-hmm. enough to make a little fish fry out of. And it's just really cool to see them around, you know, especially because you can go out, get your salmon limit, and then come back in, get a bobber uh, or a little bottom rig, mm-hmm. minnows, and then just pop yep. them out. But I think the perch have been pretty consistent this year as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I have a theory about that, why we're starting to see – more of a consistent and uh, consistency with the perch fishing. The sizes of them seem to be, on average, a little bit better than what we saw before. Mm-hmm. So my theory is that uh, we saw the the new story that DNR has said that there's like seven or eight classes of alewife in the lake right now. So that means we got the very little baby alewives all the way to the eight nine inches. The, the big older ones that are however many years old. So we've got a wide range of, of bait, which is great because that means for every size of, of fish species that will feed on them, there's something along the chain. They have from, a forage They base, have a forage yeah. base, right? So I'm thinking potentially because there's a lot more alewife around, the Browns, the Lakers, weren't necessarily relying on the perch to feed on. 
because mm-hmm. they can just go for the allies. And so maybe those perch fry and the, the fingerlings and what, whatever were able to survive more from, from predation yep. to then allow them to kind of, that's my theory. Of course, that's just a, a theory, right? Like I don't have oh, any scientific sense. proof. It, it does, right? Like mm-hmm. it makes sense. Lo- it seems it's definitely logical. Yeah. I and, mean, we've seen in the years where there were a lot less alewives, the perch were really um, preyed upon by yeah. especially the steelhead, but everything. And you'd, you know, you'd go offshore 200 plus feet of water and the fish you'd catch out there, all the steelhead and the coals and everything would just be full of perch. And we didn't see that this year. They were always full of alewives. Yeah. It's always interesting, too, why perch wander off into the middle of the lake. It's mm-hmm. kind of interesting, too. Um, that being said, though, that that's kind of like my working theory on as to why we're starting to see some of these perch show up in the eight, nine, ten inches, pretty a little more consistency, uh, consistency, especially because all these perch Facebook groups popped up. They have thousands of people in them. <laughs> and Everybody very, loves it's, perch. It's very yeah, it's everybody's favorite. It gets fish. very he- heated watching. I, you know, I just I like to <laughs> join them and just read the comments because people get fired up about why are you saying this, why are you doing this, or where are you catching them at? There's a lot of interest in the perch mm-hmm. fishing, which, um, as you said, can you, you know people really care about their perch fishing. Yep. Um, but they showed up. There was a lot of good fishing out of Indiana. I saw for perch. Uh, for a period, there was a little run for them. Uh, was it like June, July, I think, might mm-hmm. have been? They showed up over there, and they were doing really well off the dunes and all of that. Um, interested to see how this winter period comes. I mean, everyone knows your typical spots. These are common locations, right? People know the slips down in Chicago, down in Indiana, out of Portage, and, and mm-hmm. Michigan City. It's no real secrets here. Um, I think once you come up to our area, Guys get a lot more tight lipped on where they're going because it's yeah. not and, easy to and find them up here. It's a little yeah, it's definitely harder to catch them up here. And in either way, like yeah, you got to be more tight lipped. If you find a fish, you better not yeah spill the beans because it's gonna they're all gonna be gone pretty quick. We need to do we, we need to do a perch episode. There's a couple of people we have in mind that were great mm-hmm. for it. <clears throat> Excuse me, that um like are primarily perch anglers mm-hmm. participate in seminarama hardcore. We're going to have to twist the arm uh, to get them in here. Not to say where they're fishing at, but just to talk about what they're experiencing with sizing. Yeah. And techniques um, and all yeah, that just, kind of just, stuff. Yeah, just basic stuff, right? Because we, we certainly, when we have guests on here, we, we don't want to uh, press them out of information that they don't want to share, but mm-hmm. certainly want to talk about just the, you know, what they're seeing because they're doing it so often, you know, in their experience. So for any perch guys out there, we're coming for you. Yep. <laughs> You're going to be on this show. Um, so we got ice fishing, and I think that's going to be the end of the year overall. Yeah. And just on a, a kind of a recap, I, I suspect that it'll be good uh, winter fishing, good ice fishing. That seems to be pretty consistent. Mm-hmm. You know? I mean, right now the brown steeler is showing up, so that's a good sign going into winter. Yeah. Yeah, and then we'll have uh, all next year to do this all again, the cycle, wash, rinse, repeat. And I'm super curious as to what next year is going to bring, mm-hmm. especially based off of this year. We have to see how the weather sets up on us again. Does it prolong the cold? Does it warm up faster? Mm-hmm. Do the pink show up again? Do we finally get our big kings around? Do the coho go back to kind of like a normal? Like so many questions. I'm so interested in what the, what next year is going to bring in terms of 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 uh, the fishery. But I think it's safe to say. It's another year of overall just a consistent, really good fishery. We're very fortunate mm-hmm. to to be in the situation that we're in where all, all of us have been be able to catch fish out here. Good sizes, a nice variety, and pretty blessed, I think, huh? Yep, yeah. definitely. Yeah, so that is our overview of the 2022 fishing season. Uh, and, <clears throat> of course, we want to hear what you guys think in your experience do you agree? What did you think about kind of each section of the year? How did it work for you? Was it fairly the same? Was it vastly different? Let us know down below in the comments. Uh, share that with us. We're looking forward to rolling out some more of these uh, episodes as we get our guests in here. We're going to be filming uh, over these next coming weeks. So we plan to have another 12 episode season of the podcast covering a variety of topics. Uh, we're going to do individual stuff like we're going to talk about the pink salmon dedicated show we're going to talk about boat control it's another big one guys are really interested in boat control techniques so they can uh 
you know, get out there and hone that in. That alone goes a long way into catching more fish. When you yep. control that boat, your angles, your your spreads are being pulled properly. So we have shows like that. We've got conversations about the Kings, uh, quite a few things we're going to touch on. And if you have a suggestion on a topic or conversation you'd like for us to uh, have here with, with, whether it's ourselves or with our guests, let us know. Shoot us a message on Facebook, leave it in the comments. Just let us know. We read through it all. Uh, we take everything you guys kind of suggest into account and try to incorporate into um, the the podcast. Uh, we'll probably do one or two live versions of the podcast. We'll go we'll go on our uh, YouTube live and do that. So it's gonna be a fun time. All these conversations, a lot of great guests we've got lined up with years of experience to help give you guys insight um, to just add that into your arsenal. Um, grow from it. we we saw a lot of new. Yeah, there's a lot of new salmon fishermen out yes, there. Yes, and, and yeah, I forgot and to And they're talk having about a that. lot of success, too. Yeah, yeah. That was another good thing from the shop perspective, the amount of new people coming in. Mm-hmm. Really, really good for a, for a variety of reasons, right? One, we always want to see the, 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 the community grow, the sport grow here. Mm-hmm. Obviously, uh, the bias here is that as a business, we, you know, we kind of need our customers and we need the community to grow to sustain and, 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 um, and all that stuff. Um, but it also helps because, you know, these are people that are getting licenses and stamps that help fund what's going on here. So the more people are fishing, the more it just, that's like the whole economy of, of everything in the sport grows and so many new people. Uh, thank you to all the new folks that came in to the shop, uh, trusted us to get you guys rigged up in, in, in the most economical way, you know, um, quite a few times. And I know you've experienced this. I experienced it this year a lot. Guys will come in brand new. Oh, I didn't know you. I just found your shop. Awesome. Welcome. Thank you for coming in. You know, I was at X and X, X and X shop fishing place and they sold me this, spent like a thousand dollars on it and it hasn't been working for me. And then we'll set them up with something that is <clears throat> considerably less than what they paid. But these are things that like are rock solid. And they'll leave out of here like, and they'll come back a few days later or a week later. Oh my God, thank you so much. This stuff is working perfect for me. Mm-hmm. It's pulling my board the right way, or it's doing this for me, or my rigger's great. You know, the rod is great for the rigger now. And that to us is is why we're here to get you guys set up with what you need without any extra distractions on the other stuff, right? Like it's, you know, um, we, we, we set you up with what you need to get on the fish. And uh, so- Thank you to all the newer folks to the uh, for trusting us for you know coming through for your business. Uh, we definitely appreciate it, and uh, we're always here for anyone experienced, new, to help you guys with the gear. Uh, quite a few people come in and ask for something, and Rob is able to um, look into it to do orders to include it. If, mm-hmm. if there's enough people like, hey, we want to get this. I mean, quite a few times. I mean, this year we had there were spoons that quite a few captains wanted. We 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 custom ordered a run. Mm-hmm. We we gave um and typically what Rob would do is he'll you'll you'll order for those that want it, but you'll get extras to then make it available for anyone to grab them. And so like what was that one spoon that that we got that was um, Well, we had the Gold Hud special. Yes. That was in about the middle of the year. Yes. The Stinger Gold Hud, spe- Gold Hud special. Those flew amazing off. spoon. Yeah. I mean, 300 of them in like two weeks. Yeah. Um, but before that, I think it was earlier in the spring. It was the white one with the black. Yeah, we had the holdout, the moonshine holdout yes. made. We had some s- custom smooth blank yes. um, moonshines. They were just the regular patterns, the Wonder Bread and the Flounder Pounders and all that. But we had uh, charters that prefer the smooth blank. So we had it made on a smooth blank. And then, of course, we had that available for the rest of the public to buy as well. Yeah, yeah. So we'll order for the for those you know, charter groups that want it, put mm-hmm. a bulk order in because that's the only thing they will do it. They have to get a bulk order. Mm-hmm. And then we'll add extra. And then we, hey, guys, we got extra here, you know, come by. So um, if any time there's something you might be looking for that you're not finding anywhere, get a hold of Rob, ask him about it, something he can look into. And, and a lot of times if he could do it, he'll, he'll do it. Yep. You know, um, that's the beauty of, you know, the shop here being so, you know, small business owner, you know, trying to just work for the community. So um, thank you all. Uh, look forward to serving you guys going into 2023. And in the meantime, over the winter period, for those of you that aren't going to be fishing on ice, 
Uh, by the way, we have a ton of ice gear. So just mention that now. Come by, check it all out, or visit mm-hmm. the website. Ton of ice stuff. But we know quite a few guys might not be fishing. So ho- hopefully this podcast will keep you guys going over the winter period so that you can get information, gain some knowledge, and then going into next year, apply that. We're going to have salmon schools coming up with Keating. We'll have our own stuff going on here. Yep. So it's a good time, you know, just just because it's cold or the water froze, freezes up doesn't mean we ain't talking about fishing. We're preparing for the next season. Um, great time to stock up on stuff because we are getting a lot of stuff in. Yep. As you all know, the the whole system is still wonky from the whole COVID thing. So um, as we get stuff in, we post it up on Facebook, Instagram, let you know it's here. We always suggest once you see it available, come by and grab it before it's gone because then we're waiting for it to come back again. You know, so it takes time. So that's all we got. Any final words, Rob? No, I think you covered it all. Awesome. So thank you guys again. Like, subscribe, and we'll see you guys on the next episode. Peace.